I should go to Gary Kasparov. He is waiting for 14 years. He was the world's top chess master. My old job. World chess champion Gary Kasparov. For 20 years, Gary Kasparov was the greatest chess player in the world. My fame came from the world of chess. Chess was treated in the Soviet Union back in the Stalin's days as a very important ideological tool to prove the superiority of communist regime over decadent West. That's why having Soviet world champion was so important for the system. I was half Armenian, half Jewish boy, born in Baku and raised there. Being uh, a Jew in Soviet Union was a challenge. Yes, it puts extra pressure on you. It's either crushes you or makes you stronger. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't crushed me. <laughs> I grew up in the environment where only victory was an acceptable result. Anything but gold medal is a failure. When I was a kid, teenager, my mother had a poster on top of my bed that said, if not you, who else? My mother accompanied me at any event that I went on. She always was there as the, as the head of the team. My first trip abroad, I was sent to France. I was not allowed to travel with my mother, which was a big, of course, pushback. They, they never let families to travel because they wanted to make sure that uh, I would not be tempted to stay there. The gap between uh, Soviet propaganda and the free world, it was exposed almost on, just on, on, on every level. But at the same time, I knew that I had to play by the rules to have my chance winning the title. All I wanted at that time to become world champion. Arguably, my uh, rivalry with Carpo was the greatest in history of any sport. Phenomenal player with unique talent, but he always had tailwind that uh, pushed him even further because he was Russian. Loyal soldier of the Communist Party and the regime. He's on one side, of the Iron Curtain, and I'm on the other. We played uh, 48 games. Somehow I managed to survive. And I told my mother, not to I shouted, Mommy, they let me beat Karpov. I became the youngest world champion, and that was not just a chess victory. It was more like a signal that the Soviet system that looked very much frozen on time could actually be melted. Chess world champion was always kind of the high priest in, in the big temple. It was not my choice to actually uh, to merge chess and politics. Those were Soviet realities. And I knew that, you know, as a world champion, I could afford more than ordinary Soviet citizens. I could feel it. Would them um, be important for millions of my compatriots. To see young world champion being an active agent of change would encourage them. In 1991, after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the triumph of freedom around the world, we all expected things to move almost automatically into the future, into the bright future. Very few, if any, thought about threats of being thrown back to the dark ages of dictatorship. I felt, rightly or wrongly, I could make a difference, so I, uh, I wanted to dive in. Former chess champion is ready to play a new game, and this time the stakes will be much higher. You are running in a presidential election. I think you are already the opposition candidate, where your life may literally be on the line. Is that an exaggeration? Do you fear for your life? Do you take precautions? If you ask me whether my fight against Putin's dictatorship is personal, yes, it is personal. It was more about restoring democracy and, and, and defending human rights. I knew I had to do it. I had to try. I had to try it for my, for my kids. This regime is criminal. It's a police state. I cannot explain it. I cannot give you just calculations. It's not chess, you know, it's not I play here. He or she plays there, and this is no. It's um, it's about what's inside of you. 
Look, it's being arrested is, is unpleasant. Being arrested violently, it's, it's, it's very unpleasant. People keep asking, Mr. Kasparov, what do you think about uh, so many Putin enemies being murdered? Do you worry about your personal security? The moment you ask this question, you assume that I had a choice of not doing that. And I don't think I did. It's like your life mission. I, I would like to see Russia to be free, but it's not just to, to the sake of my country. Democracy doesn't exist in a vacuum. The idea that you can, you know, isolate your democracy and protect it while ignoring the rest of the world does not work these days. I had no choice. And uh, it was a very painful decision. And I spoke to my mother and she also realized that it would be much better for me to continue my, my fight while being free outside of Russia than facing imminent arrest and uh, jail time in Putin's Russia. We spoke every day, at least once a day. And uh, I knew there was a rule that uh, the moment my plane takes off or lands, I have to call her, whether it was five in the morning in Moscow, whatever time, so just any, any crazy hour. So she dedicated her life to her last breath, Christmas night 2020, when she died from COVID in Moscow, to her, to her son. So she, she was a very loyal, devoted woman. And um, I, it's still feel, feel so bad and just it's that I couldn't I couldn't um, um, hold her hand when 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 she passed away because that was her dream so she always wanted to to close her eyes to to go just to, just for a final rest with me next to her I learned from my mother and uh, from great Soviet dissidents that you, know, you have to take a stand. That the purpose of our life, the purpose of any activities that we are undertaking, it's to make a difference. It's a, it's a classical motto of Soviet dissidents, do what you must and so be it. If not you, who else? <laughs> 